Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome all of the readers to Notes. Uh, we have a very special occasion today. We're really happy to have the chance to talk with uh, the new director, Lubica Depovic, uh, to learn a little bit about her background and what her hopes are for the center. So we're so happy to all of you for tuning in and for taking time to uh, read our newsletter, the CTL newsletter. So uh, what we'll do today is introduce Lubica to you, Lubica Depovic, and she will talk to us a little bit about her background and her hopes for her work here at the center and how she feels being at LaGuardia right now. You've only been here how long, Lubica? Uh, about a month. Yeah, how's it going? Good. Yes, you were so excited when you first came. And I still am. You were in love. Are <laughs> yes. you still in love yes. with, with the center? <laughs> yes, I love being on campus. I really enjoy coming here and, uh, you know, getting in the crowd with students in the morning. <laughs> Having and coffee down in the atrium. Yes, Walking yes, around, exactly. learning about... About uh, the college, seeing yeah. seeing students in classroom. So I've been with CUNY for, for many years, for over 20 years. Uh, but most of the time, other than when I was uh, uh, teaching as an adjunct, um, most of that time um, was in CUNY Central. So I enjoyed my work there. I was um, in the College Now program in different roles, uh, most recently the university director of the College Now program. Uh, but I always uh, wanted to be on campus. It, somehow it just never, never happened. Uh, and so when this opportunity uh, came around, I jumped at you it. You applied. You had yes. a lot of competition, too, for this, <laughs> this position. So welcome. We're so happy, really sincerely, to have you. But, you know, I'm curious. You, you were working as an adjunct? Uh, yes. At so you were teaching? Teaching English uh, to speakers of other languages uh, at, uh, at Queensborough Community College and at uh, Bronx Community College. So you went back and forth like adjuncts do, yes. like three hours on one campus, six hours yes. on another campus. and two hours travel in between. <laughs> yeah, no, I know the <laughs> yes. life of an adjunct, uh, but you survived it. And then you went into college. What is, tell us about College Now a little bit for folks who may not know. Uh, college Now is a transition program for high school students, dual enrollment program, where students who are qualified take college credit courses to get ready for college. And... Um, so most of our students, College Now students, are in a year or in a semester are becoming uh, LaGuardia students or you know, CUNY students in general. So and they take courses, credit courses? They take college credit courses, credit courses, yes, courses. through the program. So there's a big program here at LaGuardia that uh, just as the Center for Teaching and Learning is a leader in, in that space, the College Now program at LaGuardia Community College was a leader in that oh, space really? as well. That's yes, yes, That's very so innovative in the, in the sense that it, uh, um, that it intentionally provided opportunities for students who are what we call uh, academically mid-range students. You know, they, they're not excelling, but they're not failing either. Mm -hmm. They're doing well. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily mm -hmm. um, know where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have big plans of going mm -hmm. to college, mm -hmm. uh, but, but they are doing well. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the muddling middle, sometimes they call them. So the program uh, here um, at LaGuardia uh, created special entryways and pathways for students like that to gain confidence to um, that they too can go to college and do college level work. So and we actually studied that. We we looked at the data uh, later that showed how participating in this uh, college now program and the taking college credit courses actually is consequential for them yes really yes good. put them in a in a much better position yeah. in their first semester in college so the purpose is sort of like our, F, our first year seminar yes to acclimate exactly them to college and to inspire them and as you said to get confidence to it, it, yes to exactly on exactly. campus i always yeah. see them in the elevators they're always like standing in the elevators and going to classes <laughs> and i'm always sort of urging them on yeah good luck do well so i want <laughs> they do they, they do, do well yeah <laughs> I wanted to ask, because um, I know you've been in education for, you know, a good good part of, of your life. Yes, yes, for many years. Uh, educate. I used to do translation as well, uh, but mostly uh, education. Yeah. 
so can you tell us a little bit, you know, I'm curious about your background, where you came from, and did you, did you know you wanted to, I knew from very early on that I wanted to be a teacher, and maybe it was because I had uh, five younger brothers and sisters, and I was kind of bossy and always like telling them what they had to do, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, yes. I had to learn maybe in class you shouldn't be bossy, but um, I always knew that I wanted to teach. I grew up reading and I just always wanted to share what I was learning and what I was feeling with other people. And so I wanted to know a bit about you, like where you grew up, what your hometown was, and what were the influences, the educational influences? Oh, there, there's a really curious fact there. Uh, I grew up in, uh, in uh, Rijeka, uh, a, a town in Croatia that used to be called Fiume, at the time when Fiorella LaGuardia uh, actually worked there you know. as a as a um, in the American consulate as a diplomatic representative of the United States, and uh, I think 1902 or something like that. Uh, we have uh, one of the major streets in 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 my hometown no. is named Fiorella LaGuardia. <laughs> And and so he actually you spoke were Croatian. Destined. Your, your <laughs> destiny was, destined was to in that street, but you didn't know it then. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, oh. Yeah, and he actually uh, spoke spoke Croatian as well. I guess he lived there for for two years. His family came from from Trieste, which well, is I was very close ask to you because it's so close. Yes. And so yeah, I used to I used to live in Italy, so I know that you know the um, connection between yes, Trieste yes, and that area. So, so when you were a kid, did you did you have that direction toward education when um, you were growing up? I don't know, not not necessarily. I went to uh, I started studying pedagogy. That's what you uh, said. Yeah. Yes, but um, um, what's the what's the proper word? Dropped out? I discontinued that. <laughs> now, and, now we say stopped out. I there's stopped more, out. There's more hope in yes. in stopped out. It sort of gives you. I stopped yeah. out, and then I went to. Uh, to to uh, to England actually to learn English to be able to um, to study English as my major uh, and so when you study English abroad I studied at the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia got my bachelor's in English and sociology when you study English abroad you have to uh, you you uh, are prepared to teach it so we had a lot of uh, uh, methods courses as part of the undergraduate degree in, in, in English. And I learned how to, uh, you know, in order to get, to get your degree, you have to take the courses in, in, in pedagogy and methods of mm -hmm. teaching. You have to do an actual practicum. So I started teaching while I was still in college, like in the, the later. Um, years of college. It took me a long time to, to get my undergrad because uh, I, I stopped out and, and worked. Once I started teaching, actually, I, I enjoyed it. So I just continued teaching, but I had to eventually get my bachelor's. So When you were teaching, did, were you teaching in what we call um, like high school or primary school? You know what? I did. I, I taught in elementary school. I taught in uh, high school, but I mostly taught uh, adults in like a private language school, yeah. um, adults who wanted to learn English for business purposes. Um, so, yeah, my... Uh, most of my teaching experience back in former Yugoslavia was teaching adults. So one uh, point of interest to me is that emphasis on pedagogy. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you and I have talked about this, that we have uh, other colleagues, uh, especially my great friend Marina Dedloskaya, who comes from Russia, who I remember when I first met her, um, when she was teaching math, she talked about how she was schooled, she was trained in pedagogy to teach. Yes, exactly, the same thing. And we, I don't, I know that folks who teach K through 12 mm -hmm. have an emphasis on how to teach, how to create lesson plans. Oh yes, cetera, all of that, right? yes, yes. But not so much if you're, if you're directed toward teaching secondary, post-secondary education, if you're going to be in in colleges or undergraduate, you know, we learn our discipline and then we profess it. We stand up in front of the class or we used to. And so the focus on pedagogy is kind of new for many, many people. But you had this background growing. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, that was the preparation. So then I, um, um, I, I, as I said, I worked as a, as a teacher in, uh, in Slovenia and in Croatia. 
And uh, I came to the United States in uh, 1992, 93, uh, when, the, uh, when the war started in the former Yugoslavia. So, um, and I kind of came here with the desire to just wait it out, to see, you know, go back. Yeah, to go back. But, uh, um, but I, I didn't. I ended up staying here. Yes. So, uh, so I was able to, to get a job teaching English relatively, uh, relatively quickly. Uh, back then, I started teaching in private uh, language schools here in New York City, in uh, Greenpoint in Brooklyn, in, uh, in, in Manhattan. And, and that was very, very grueling. It was, uh, it was hard work. <laughs> it was teaching 40 hours <laughs> a week just to be able to make enough money to, you know, to make ends meet. Uh, but I think it gave me like a, a really good, good uh, uh, preparation in, in, in teaching. <laughs> also, you learned the subway system really well. Yes. How to get along the city. The <laughs> That's city. true. But you That's can also true. relate to our adjuncts in many ways. You oh, absolutely. Understand. Yes, you yes. That it's very hard to... Um, it, it, it's very hard to, to, to make a living um, teaching as an adjunct. When I talk about the private language schools, that was not adjuncting. That was uh, I know, I know. much different. And um, I used to live in Istanbul, and I taught in one of those private schools, too, so I, I do know yeah. what, that, what that's like. So I wanted to ask you, you came from Central, and now you're in the Center for Teaching and Learning, and you must have heard about LaGuardia when you were at Oh, sure. At yes, yes, yes. And um, in ways that um, were complementary to our campus and enough to make you want to come here. So here you are. And what, what's before you? What intrigues you? What interests you most? What do you hope to accomplish? What are you surprised by? Yeah, so uh, like I said, I love being on campus. I love seeing, uh, seeing students. What I'm really looking forward to is uh, interacting with faculty as well. Um, I know... You know, so I came from Central, which is mostly administration. Uh, but my my position was always uh, like that. That CUNY is the faculty. <laughs> you know, without faculty, you have no college. <laughs> uh, maybe you can have it without administration, or maybe, <laughs> uh, but you definitely cannot. You know, it's debatable, but you definitely cannot have a college without faculty. So I'm really looking forward to. Uh, working with faculty more, and I've seen I've, we've had interactions with uh, with teachers, instructors in college now as well, uh, and and so this is this is the part that excites me to 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 be closer to people who are excited about their job, excited about teaching students, excited about their disciplines, mm -hmm. who you know talk about it, who discuss it, who think about it, who uh, think about always finding. Uh, maybe better, maybe just different ways of of teaching, of uh, uh, facilitating the the knowledge uh, transfer and the and the knowledge. Um, and it's not really transfer. It's it's kind of two ways, I think. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah, exactly. That's yeah, the transfer goes both ways. Yes, yes exactly. Um, so that's what's uh, exciting uh, for me. That kind of uh, being immersed in this. Uh, uh, in the in the teaching and learning and all of the aspects of, of that. So, you know, we could say that about, we would hope, any campus, you know, that the, yes. the, the, cap, the faculty is the spark, the, the faculty is what kind of creates the yes. character yes, of yes, the yes. campus. So what do you find at LaGuardia? Like, what have been, if you could say, your encounters so far? You've only been here a month, so... You know, yeah. you're still kind of getting used to it, getting getting grounded. Yeah. But what I think this. The, I think this is my impression, but I believe it's going to be confirmed uh, that LaGuardia places special emphasis on uh, creating a supportive atmosphere for students. And I think the first year seminar is a mm. is an institutionalized uh, aspect mm. of that, mm. where uh, I guess as a college, it it realizes that. Uh, um, it's a big transition for students to be at the college as opposed to in the, in the high school. All of a sudden, they're on their own. And I think this is where the first year seminar jumps in to make sure that they're not on their own, that it's not all left up to them to, to figure it out. It's really wonderful. I, I used to teach the first year seminar to see 
some students coming in from high school, and they, of course you don't shed your high school skin as soon as you walk into a classroom. You're not, you know, yeah, it was a only a couple of months. Comic book. You exactly. Don't become like a superhero, a super student. But somewhere, kind of like midpoint, something happens, and where there may have been a self-consciousness about being a college student, suddenly that drops away. Mm -hmm. And the, and I don't know, the, um, the way of presenting oneself with regard to learning mm -hmm. um, changes, and it, it's a really beautiful thing. And then, as you said, the conversation changes and the reciprocity between the, the teacher and the student changes. It becomes a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. And yes. that's, that's what's so beautiful, I think, about that first year seminar, especially when they're attached to the disciplines. No, when you're being introduced. To yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if the student ends up not eventually staying in that discipline, right. to get that first-hand knowledge to kind of figure out what what does it mean to be a graphic designer? That's right. Like, what kind of jobs That's are right. out there? What do you do? You doodle, right. <laughs> you know. Right. So to That's and right. and and likewise for other disciplines to get that uh, uh, inside knowledge, they may not. Don't, they don't necessarily have people in the family who have right. been in these occupations yeah. so that it's kind of passed down uh, right. at a dinner table uh, for, for them. So I think this, this support for students is what, uh, to me, sets LaGuardia um, apart from... from uh, and I'm not saying that other no, colleges don't offer, yeah. but, but the fact that it is... Uh, that, it's, that it's not just required, but that... Um, that a lot of effort and thinking is put into uh, creating the supportive, supportive environment for students. Because I've seen that in college now as well, that the programs that offered tutoring, that offered mentoring, would yeah. always see an, uh, an increase in right. their uh, success right. rates, in the, right. in the, in the uh, number of students who are now getting C and above in their college credit courses. That relationship, that mentoring relationship, whatever language we want to use to yes. describe that relationship between a teacher and a, a student is, is essential to the growth of the student and the pleasure and satisfaction of the teacher, of course. But, you know, in many elite colleges, mm -hmm. That, that relationship is, um, it's taken for granted that you go to your professor, you talk to your professor, they have office hours, you sit there, you look at their books, and you imagine a world that one day you can inhabit too. And I think that the first year seminar and the way it relates to the other disciplines, it enables that kind of relationship to imagine yourself and then to fulfill yourself as a, as a person who's... Uh, going to contribute to the culture, to society in some way. Sure, way. sure, yes. The relationship with the, with the instructor, and you know, when you, mentor, when you mention elite colleges, yeah, it, it's, it's probably much easier to have that relationship yeah. when your ratio is eight to one. Right. <laughs> uh, right. But here, I, I think an effort is placed on that, the, the, the mentoring relationship with the, with the instructor, but also with peer mentors. I think yes, that is a, a very, absolutely. very important yeah. component. That's, yeah. that's the one I was referring to when I said that in college now, when we see programs uh, implement that kind of uh, wraparound support for students, yes. where even if they don't need tutoring, they're doing well, that there is a peer mentor who is checking in on them just to see how it's going. Is it getting to, to be too much for you to do the college credit course on top of your your high school right. uh, load. So here it is the same. How is it going? Is it too much to do all of your work on top of your uh, your 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 work work for pay? <laughs> you know, is it too much to do all the to keep up with your school assignments when you have uh, a part time job or you have uh, children or whatever other family obligations? You know, so this kind of uh, support for students. Um, I love the word wraparound, that mm -hmm. there's this kind of 360 support for students. L let's talk a little bit about faculty and the support that the center um, is committed to providing faculty, mm -hmm. many of whom have their families just like students. Exactly, families, obligations, yes. Many of whom are adjuncts mm -hmm. who are taking, you know, the seven train, the six train, going across to Brooklyn, then to Queens. Um, 
and certainly during the pandemic, it's been so hard uh, for, for folks learning how to then have a Zoomed classroom, for example. But I'm curious about um, what your hopes are for your work at the center, working with faculty and pedagogy, how you can take your experience with pedagogy. You and I have talked, we had a wonderful conversation yesterday about uh, decoloniality in the classroom. And I just wonder what you're, what you're hoping for with faculty. Uh, well, you know, uh, first of all, the, the center is just wonderful. And I hope I'll be able to live up to the expectations and continue the, the good work. Of the center, just from what I'm, from what I've been reading about uh, the seminars, what I've seen so far, very, very little. But uh, um, have you had a chance to visit any of the seminars? No, not not yet. But uh, other than the new faculty seminar, That's which right. I, I yeah. so far I thought was uh, wonderful as well, and it seems like there is maybe a little bit of this wraparound for faculty as yeah. well. Yeah. So the new faculty seminar it's in like which the they, in a uh, for, yes, yeah. yes, for faculty in which they get to, to, to learn all of these things that are really important, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of the administrative mm -hmm. uh, things, but also mm -hmm. about teaching, about uh, the college, about the students here mm -hmm. at LaGuardia. Many of them are new to teaching at the community college. Uh, so uh, that kind of the, the administrative support uh, and then all of the different, the, the seminars are just wonderful. I've read, I've read through some of the past ones and, you know, I, I certainly know I'm not going to be able to, but I wish <laughs> I could take all of them yeah. myself. Uh, they, they, they seem really, uh, really exciting and important. Uh, so my hope is that I, I will be able to continue that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to the time when I will like know when I see all these names, I will be able to put them together with the, with the person when I will have had interactions with the, with the faculty and seen some of the seminars, um, and be able to, uh, to, to, uh, to continue to participate or, or if, if that's not the case, uh, to, to create a community, to, to continue to collaborate, to create a community, because there, you know, as far as teaching is concerned, and I, I haven't, I haven't been teaching now for the past 10 years or so. It has, but, and, and, and the resources that are out there, that has changed so much. There is so much out there. So it's not so much the question of where you can go and find uh, ideas for how to teach, where you can go and look others to see how others are, are, are done it. I don't think that the, the resources themselves uh, are the, the key thing. The key thing here is to connect with the, with the professionals, with other faculty, either in your discipline or across disciplines, because there's so much to, to learn both from those in the same faculty, but from, from, uh, from instructors teaching in, in different disciplines. So I think this is really the key role uh, for the for the center to facilitate the the creation of that community uh, really among the among the faculty across disciplines and also yes I mean the faculty reports are that one of the pleasures of the seminars is this cross connection like listening to somebody in social science connect with something like I know in the food justice seminar connecting you know this anthropological perspective. Mm -hmm environmental perspective with folks in natural sciences. I mean, it's, it's great to watch that happen. But I'm also thinking, um, before we wrap up, about, about um, connecting with ACE. We have so much energy in um, the Division of, of Adult and Continuing mm -hmm. Education, and we really want to bring those folks in, and they, too, enliven the seminars and bring their work with students from the immig um, immigrant Center for Education, mm -hmm. from CLIP, from the Fatherhood Academy, oh, from sure. Workforce Development. We really want to have those faculty or those teachers and their students come into the campus so that we create this sort of one identity, um, but made up of all these different perspectives. I wanted to ask you then, um, so thank you for that, for your enthusiasm about our faculty and our students. And I'd like to know, like, before, we, before we close, like, what do you hope for yourself? Like, what do you want to develop in yourself? Is there some part of you that you're thinking, okay, I did this when I was adjuncting, I did this when I was teaching, I did this when I was at Central. Now I'm in this other environment, this new environment. 
how am I going to personally grow? What, what yes, oh, I ha <laughs> yes, yes, that I think this environment is definitely uh, inspire me to, uh, to to continue my work. I have a um, uh, I have a, a, a research interest in uh, uh, language and literacy, in uh, teaching academic language to um, not just to, to, to speakers of uh, other languages, but I think to, to native speakers as well. Uh, that one of the one of one of the important, maybe sometimes overlooked barriers for students is the academic language, a new discourse that they mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. um, they mm -hmm. they have to master essentially mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in order to be successful in, in in different disciplines. So I hope to uh, to continue to 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 work on that. Um, maybe that will lead to me getting back and finishing my PhD in oh. in linguistics. Yeah. Maybe not. I hope it will. Uh, time, but yes, time to do that. yes, we do have faculty um, uh, who are really engaged in this question of academic. What, what is the academic discourse? literacy? You know, yes, what is, yes, what is academic I mean, discourse. So some some distance in, in um, introducing students mm -hmm. to academic discourse in general, but also the the uh, practices of their own disciplines because you know it's different you're you're an English major you're a journalism major you're a scientist there there's a different way there's a, there's a different, right. different way of thinking there's a different right. way of uh, writing there's a different way of Absolutely. speaking yes that's really the catch and I think you know in the seminar when we get into stuff we really start that's why it's so great to have faculty from across the disciplines because you think about the ways in which you ha you're, you're committed responsible, I guess is a better word, for introducing students to these differences. To You know, you're not going to, there's not just one language for the academy. No, there are these different yes. ways of interacting with people. And when students begin to learn the lexicon, for example, the discourse, that fancy word, uh -huh. you know, they, they relax a bit and feel, oh yeah, I speak that language, I belong to this you know these um, various communities and I'm right remember. right sure so they, they they can learn that uh, I mean they already probably do speak multiple uh, languages or, or, or yeah, dialect right. I mean we can call it an academic dialect as well that's there's nice nothing <laughs> there's nothing wrong about that <laughs> it's it fits the best definition it's a it's a it's different from some kind of uh, norm or, or accepted uh, uh, every everyday language, <laughs> definitely. So for students to realize that they already do uh, traverse That's different right. different languages, different ways yeah. of they have a different way of speaking with uh, with their friends, different way of speaking with uh, with faculty, and um, right. and and now they need to learn a different way of speaking in the discipline that they choose. And I think the that faculty can can help them. Uh, unpack that as well. For many, it it becomes second nature. They may not even be aware that uh, they're that they're that. doing this. Yeah. So it's yeah. like helping them realize that when you start, when you put on your scientist cap, you start to speak differently than when we chat about your weekend. <laughs> yeah. You know. So uh, to make that knowledge visible for students and to um, give them confidence that this is just something you you learn as you as you get deeper into into your discipline. Yes, and then you find out <clears throat> that yeah, you've kind of mastered it. And you're exactly. It yeah. Lunita, thank you so much. Your enthusiasm thank you. excites me. I, you know, <laughs> I, I I don't know if you're going to have time in the coming year to begin your PhD studies again, but. You know, I will uh, keep in touch with you. Maybe not line. in the coming year, but, uh, you know, Eventually, down the line. Down <laughs> yes, the line. yes, Thank exactly. Thank you so much, Lubisa, for, for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you for, Thank you. you know, taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, well, you're here, and we're so happy to have you, especially up here in the fourth floor. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank I'm you. so happy to be here.